do is just raise your hand or something. Uh, usually we don't have any trouble being hurt. Okay. I taught school to you. Oh, look down back here. <laughs> okay. Uh, I like to talk to you more, please. Everybody will join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And this evening we're going to have two uh, fourth grade students uh, help us, or uh, lead us in the Pledge. We're for our town. Emma Sias and Braxton Kirk. Here they come. You guys come right up here wherever you would like. Mind the wire, Mike. Face the flag. <laughs> and then we'll follow you. Braxton, don't get up on that. Okay, why don't you all think, turn and face the flag, and then you tell us when you're ready to start, okay? <laughs> right? Braxton, so put your hand up, and we'll know we're ready to go. Okay. Thank you. 
Brenda, California or somewhere. Uh, but anyway, he's on the phone here, so uh, he may interject something. If you can't hear him, I'll share that with you. But, uh, he just wanted us to know that he would be having to leave a, a little bit early because his plane was going to depart, so uh, he'll be with us for a while anyway. But Rowdy extends his wishes too. Okay, is that all? And I'll guess on the uh, vote for approval of minutes? Yeah, it is. Okay, that's an all guess vote on that. All right, at this time we have public comments. Uh, there's a sheet down there that just for your information, anytime that anybody wants to come to a board meeting and speak to the board at a board meeting, you may do that. You do not have to be on the agenda. All you have to do is come in and sign that pink piece of paper or whatever color it is over there. Uh, and then uh, when we get to this portion of our agenda, I ask if there's any comments and anyone who's listed there may speak and address the board. Now there's only uh, one limitation to that is we aren't able to get in a dialogue with you because you're not on our agenda. So uh, you may speak and whatever your thoughts are, we certainly listen to them. But we can't like get in a back and forth discussion with you because it's not an agenda item. Uh, the open meetings law makes us, re it's required of all public entities that you make everything available to the public you're going to talk about. So if you follow any governmental agency like ours, we'll always put our agendas out three days before the meeting as required by West Virginia law. And everything that's on our agenda is listed there. So that way anybody in the public out there, they know that on that given night, this is what we're going to be doing. And if they see something on there they think is really good or they don't like, they have the opportunity to come and voice their opinion on those things that are listed. But if they aren't listed, uh, we aren't able to have a conversation about it. Once again, you may still sign in and, and express yourself on something. And certainly we listen to whatever you have to say. Make that to what we have to do. And, and, and when it's necessary, I'm sure Mr. Mickey will probably make some note or two and follow up on that uh, on his uh, in a day or so later. But that's just for your information. So, but tonight, no one has signed in to speak to the board, so we'll go down now. The next part will be presentations and things like that. Those are things that are actually listed on the board agenda. So if we had somebody who wanted to speak on a particular topic, they would have gotten hold of Mrs. Powell in the previous week by Wednesday, because we put our agendas out on Thursday, and she would have listed that item on our agenda. But tonight we don't have any other item except for the LSIC Foundation, <coughs> that's the Local School Improvement Council. That's required that the Board of Education <coughs> with every LSIC, every school, on an annual basis. So uh, this is the first one that we've done this year. Uh, that's the opportunity for the school to share with us things that have been going on at the schools and activities, maybe some things you're proud of, some things you, maybe even things you think you uh, have need of. And it also gives us the opportunity to maybe ask some questions about those. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Uh, Mathis for him to uh, begin the uh, conducting LSIC. Mr. Mathis. I would like to start off by uh, you said that you were fortunate to have me here. I feel very fortunate to be here, and I'm very thankful to be here. And I appreciate your confidence in me and allowing me to be the principal here at Hearts. And after that meal, I'm really glad I'm at Hearts. <laughs> because as I was getting some notes together, I heard several people say, we do this often. So I've already gained a couple pounds since I've been here, so I will probably continue in that path. <laughs> but wonderful job, and I, I want to thank the staff for the work that you've done parent volunteers, thank you, and God bless you, appreciate all the effort that you put into preparing for this evening. And Mr. McCann, tell your grandmother that I am a fan. I am a fan. Not only were her chicken and dumplings delightful, her biscuits were right there with them. And Mr. Limble and I discussed the term salt. And we both know what that is, and we both did that. But uh, I hope you don't mind uh, if my presentation is brief, nor if it is simple, because I do not have a, a technological device set up. I'm just here to talk to you and have a conversation with you about some things that are going on. I've been very, very uh, impressed with the staff here at Hearts. There, you mentioned that it's a tight school, tight community. I've noticed that it's not only a school community, it's a community school uh, where the needs of the kids are met and uh, they go above and beyond every day, and I've been thoroughly impressed with them so far, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Um, if I'm not mistaken, 
we may be at this time the only school in the county that's growing and we have increased enrollment by over 40 students so far this year and uh, we're very thankful to do that and we're glad that the community is supporting us and that the kids are, are enrolling on a regular basis but i put before you uh, mr preacher put, the, put it on a nice paper for you but you have some data some test data in front of you could be if not i have more <coughs> percentage of proficiency in math not only here at Hearts but also Lincoln County and also the state and last year I came before the board and, and did a short brief presentation with my math department as to how we were approaching math at that time at Lincoln County High School and the reason that we had made those changes this substantiates that because during that time I made mention that at every grade level the math assessment, and not only this assessment, but every assessment that I've ever viewed in my 27 years, at each grade level, the difficulty of the math assessment and the reading language arts, but we've got a pretty good grasp on that, and we'll get to that in a moment. But in math, the application level of those math assessments increase every year. And if you'll notice, you have over 40% at the state and here at Hearts, up to the fourth grade. And nearly, uh, you have 47% here at Hearts in the fourth grade last year in math. But then you'll notice a decline. Well, the reason behind that is the same, same for the county, the same for the state. And by the time you get to the high school, the entirety of that assessment is application level in math, which basically means that you have very little, if any, computation in math. You have real world thinking problems in math, word problems, and the students not only have to be able to proficiently do math computation, but they have to be able to think mathematically. And at each grade level, the test adds more of those application problems, as I know that you, you understand and you know that. Well, what we have done to address this, and we, we have some scores that, that are relatively high, and we're even above the state at the fourth grade level last year, but then we have some that are clearly below the state level. And we're close within two points of the county level. We're actually two points above, but in reading language arts, we're a couple of points below <coughs> the county average. But how we're addressing that is we began the year as math teachers coming together and putting together a math process, the same one that we had in place at the high school, to address that issue. And we began the year by building a final. And the final was based upon the state standards. And we took each state standard and we put together a final that was at least at the application level on Bloom's Taxonomy to where we would have those upper level maths problems on that final. And that is what we're teaching toward. And we're implementing that across the board, K through eight. And hopefully we will see an increase in the math scores here as the same as we did at the high school. But that we're, we started that math process and we brought in people to train and I appreciate you funding that and taking care of that for us but we're hoping that this will be an increase now the data that the state provides is useful but at the same time they do not provide an item analysis in other words each each situation on that assessment that the state uses we do not have the availability of an item analysis, which is very difficult to pinpoint the problems. 
that are in that are involved in math. We we don't know why they're there, but we know we scored poorly on this content standard. But they're so brief and so vague, it really doesn't give us any information. That's why we've adopted this system. This system allows us to understand and know that we have to get those math problems in the classroom the same that they're going to look on this assessment and we teach toward mastery and we do not move on to new material until we have mastery in that classroom of the standards that we're covering at the time and then we bump it up the same as we did at the high school level and we're practicing that here now reading language arts we have we have implemented a couple of things to let you know what's going on we have brought in uh, trainers actually uh, we used in county people to provide this but we have provided training for our entire staff that teaches English language arts with uh, sentence writing strategies that come out of the University of Kansas and uh, it's a, a, a very simplistic approach to writing however it is consistent K through 8 here at Hearts now we have a consistent writing system from the very beginning in kindergarten, actually pre-K, all the way through the eighth grade. And it builds in stages and steps. And <coughs> everybody knows what everybody else is doing, and we put together that plan. And one of the, the main things about this writing system, and hopefully we'll be taking another look at it later, and I'll get in greater detail, hopefully as our test scores increase, but there are formulas that the students memorize to write sentences. And once they memorize those formulas, they think, as they're writing and they know that they're meeting all the requirements of a sentence as they write that sentence through those formulas. So that's how we're addressing uh, English language arts and we're addressing math. We've started two other processes that are through the University of Kansas to help with vocabulary. Uh, it's word mapping and word, by, word, uh, word ID. And uh, one, of the, one of the other things that we're doing, and, and I want to thank uh, the county for bringing this in, is the leader in me process. And every morning we begin our day as the buses unload at 720. As the buses unload at 720, we're meeting in the gymnasium and we meet as a school. And we begin every day the same to have uniformity and to have consistency. And we meet in the gymnasium as an entire staff and as an entire student body. And we do the Pledge of Allegiance. We go over morning announcements. And then we do our uh, synergizing, which it's called, with our hand motions with these seven habits of Covey, which is the leader in me process in the school. And we're already seeing uh, good things happen there. And uh, you see, you've seen some posters out and about about the seven habits and about the leader in me. A couple things that we're doing to, to help with staff morale. We are spotlighting two individuals. Uh, we've included both service and professional personnel in this, and we're doing spotlights on those individuals every week and what we do is we take a little three by five note card and we write something positive on that note card and miss blair is taking care of this for us we write something positive on those note cards we put them in this blair's box and then each week she collects those for each of those individuals and she binds them and she gives them to them because some days in education as you know are not as good as others and when you're having a bad day it's good to look at something positive that somebody thinks about you so we have those that process going on as well, but uh, there's a lot of a lot of wonderful things going on. Uh, I, I think we have a safe school. I think we have a disciplined school, and I believe we have a clean school, and we're going to continue that. And I appreciate your confidence in me and allowing me to come here. Any questions that you would have? Anybody have anything? Oh, could you explain your grading? Yes, we, we have, uh, we have, uh, we start changing classes when they get into the third grade. We have a teacher that, that specializes in math, and we have a teacher that specializes in English language arts and social studies, and we have a specialization in math and science. And we start that at the third grade level, so they actually start switching classes at that. Now, at, at kindergarten, pre-K, first, second grade, they're self-contained. But then we have a, uh, it, it's different when you get to the sixth grade, it turns into the middle school schedule, and they have science and social studies teacher, and they have a math and English language arts teacher. And then they go through the rotations of the art 
health PE music classes as well. We often hear about writing in the gym, cursive writing. Cursive writing college for school. It is coming back. It's, uh, it's, it's, now, it's now part of the state curriculum. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we see that all the time. Everybody asks that question. I'm here with the first one I've had the opportunity to ask if it's not the schools. <laughs> process yet. We started getting them used to the fire drills and that was that was interesting and entertaining with the pre-K students. Uh, it was it, it, but we will be having lockdowns, we will be practicing shelter in place and also evacuations. I know the staff that I know they done that in the past just something that obviously is important is we just try to emphasize that that's something yes. We have had four fire drills. One thing that I always try to do at the high school level, and I, a, a mutual friend of ours, Mike Ferguson, he told me years ago, uh, he had been a principal at the elementary and the middle school level, and I've been a principal at the high school and the middle school level, and he said, Tab, if you ever get the opportunity to be a principal at the elementary level, you should do that. He's because I wish I could go back now and be a principal at the high school level, but he became a superintendent and then he retired. But I have thoroughly enjoyed being uh, with babies uh, you, you get hugged and not mugged. <laughs> yeah, and, but I did. Within the first week of school, I was sick. I, I, I've been, and I, they call them baby germs. And uh, I, you, you get hugged all day long. And I, I'm thoroughly enjoying that. I like always like going down the hall with somebody hanging on your leg. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm I'm really experienced. Tell me some Ferguson. I will. Okay. Anything else? Okay, thank, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like now just to let Mr. Kip, I'd like to let him speak for a while ago just about being here and all. You have anything to do with Jeff? Always enjoy coming to Harvest, whether it's here for LSIC presentation or just a visit. I, I wish in my job that I had more opportunities to do so. I love being around the children. The little ones make me a little, you know. Me too. By yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, you know, I just appreciate all that you do. Um, you know, I say all the time, there's no harder work than that of being a teacher. You know how exhausting that can be, both physically and mentally, at the end of the day. And, uh, and I just, I've always said that. I mean, this is a wonderful school. Great work takes place here. You all love the children. The children love you right back. And, uh, and I said, it's, it's always been a wonderful experience for me to come here. It's that sense of family. Unique to this area. Very much appreciate it. Okay. All right. Uh, well, at this time, if no one has anything else, we'll go ahead and talk about this. Now, if you guys have anything you'd like to do, you're more than welcome. I don't think we're going to be here too long, but if you want to start cleaning up or eat some more, go right ahead. You can start by the time you're ready. Okay, can I have a motion?
building a trauma team according to the terms of the contract, which was attached, and this activity was funded through Title One. Item C is approval to post a new teaching position, effective immediately for the 2017-2018 school year, half-time at Guy Valley Middle School, half-time at Ranger Elementary, special education teacher. Item D is adoption of revised policy effective for the 2017-2018 school year, 3120.12, Substitutes in the areas of critical need and shortage, which is attached. If you look at that policy, we have every possible teaching certification under the sun. Including elementary education. Item E, the following adult students who ride the school bus. Item F, school volunteers who on occasion may also serve as bus chaperones for athletic events. Academic competitions or school outings and have completed volunteer orientation. Item G, Marshall University students and cloud perform required observation of early childhood education at West Hamilton Elementary in the fall semester. Okay. Anybody have any questions about any of those administrative items? Okay, not all call for questions. Is that an all missed budget on those items? Yeah. yeah. All. All right, let's go to the finance section. Do you have a motion, please? Carol made the motion. Who, who second? I'll second. Fred second that. Okay. All right, Mr. Uh, Ellis is uh, working on next week's finance straight. So uh, are we going to ask Mr. Lindell to fill in for him? He's a substitute for finance. Out of May, scheduled invoices total of six hundred. $48,298.49 attached. Invoices available for public review at the county office. You're sure it's $628,000? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to check. Right. Making sure. Bottom line. All right. Is that one item in the group of invoices? Is that an all yes, though? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's go to the personnel section. Is there a motion for that, please? So moved. Mr. Wilkerson, second by. Second. Mr. Curry. Yeah. Okay, I may appoint a short, long term substitute professional personnel. Item B, transfer of professional personnel pending the issue of certification. <coughs> item C, transfer of service personnel. If you uh, look over the effective date for one, uh, Ms. Kelly McConnell's. She will not be leaving next year. She was with the student with autism, and uh, so she will not be allowed to make sure she can find it. So that's the reason it's not going to Item B, transfer of service personnel to the return of regular employee. Item E, one of extracurricular personnel. Item F, leave of absence. And item G, retirements and resignation. And also give you a handout to uh, show where we are now. Midway, we still have a special ed position. And third grade, we'll have a third grade. After the resignation, except the night we find the teacher to fill that position. If you look on one resignation, Melissa Belt is leaving, but uh, she cannot leave until we find a certified teacher to fill that position. So we can that uh, <coughs> Duval will repost the Title I. Hamlin will wait on uh, interviews at this close. For the second grade, West Hamlin's okay. Guy Valley Math will be reposted. The halftime special ed, the halftime uh, will be posted. Ranger, halftime counselor, halftime special ed. Counselor Hart at Lincoln County High School, we have an English will be reposted. We'll be posting the special ed position. This, uh, one of our teachers that has special ed certification uh, took the practice, got her English certification, so she moved within the school they can move any time during the year. So that's what's going on. And the county was still looking for speakers from that region at all. And as you heard Mr. Mathis speak there, uh, they picked up 41 students, is that correct? And I think uh, 40, uh, 21, 20 of those three that they have life like to And we're looking at that, we're trying to look at the schedule, Dr. Lowe's looking at everything we can. 
and may have to come back and ask for a special ed teacher to put them to the and they can't work out the schedule because we'll be out in the class and, and we're getting monitored in November. Some work between Thanksgiving and Christmas are on. Special ed. Special ed. So. Roughly half of the new students are at night. Have you ever given another call? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, come on. Okay. Okay. Uh, another item is just uh, about full back uh, and hiring a parent and family engagement facilitator. I gave everyone a draft copy. And uh, what I'd like you to do is to look at this, and if you have any comments, share them with us uh, within the next week or so, and we'll, we'll bring back something to, that would be approved uh, at the next meeting. One of the questions was about the salary. If you look at the last page, that's how we come up with that salary. It was a, a, a salary schedule nine, which is uh, like an 82, and that was the same that, that Donna, Girls get paid, and that's how we come up with that. It's, it's that much, it amounts to 1188 per hour plus fringes. That's what we're looking at. And one of the other questions is basically the same things that, that Donna did in this old job. Uh, one of the things uh, was, was some concern was on the second page, uh, number 13. Uh, this person will also be responsible to help coordinate with the special ed department the Special Olympics and Spring Games that, that we have. We're just maintaining that name, right? We're just maintaining that name. And, and, and the reason we do that, Special Olympics, there's only certain kids can participate. But Spring Games, we let some others that, you know, if not, we wouldn't have that many participate. And, they, and the thing of it is, they've been doing it since second, third grade. It's hard now to say you're in fifth grade, you've been doing it. So no, you can't go this year. That's what we're planning to do. But there's some that are really qualified to move on to the special Olympics and that's what we need to do. And it's combined with it together. Okay. Uh, if we could, uh, if we could let Mr. Linder know by Wednesday, if we have any concerns or ideas or whatever, that would be good. Uh, that would be good. Are you wanting to put it on the next agenda? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, that way, on uh, our agenda, it goes out next tomorrow. Uh, The sewers, the, yeah, let's talk sewers. the sewage plants. Yes. What's the latest on those? Uh, the latest uh, that I had in Sorry. conversation with uh, Rick Osmond is there's uh, some question as to whether or not these would be sewage the plants that would be above ground or whether or not they could actually be in ground. And I think he is waiting on some information from the, uh, the department. Okay. I'll check That's when fine. I get back. But it's my understanding that any work that would take place would take place next summer. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> to to okay. Thank you. Now, with that, is our understanding that they could be installing those and the others still be operable? Yes, it does. 
that's what we were told uh, when we went through this process. And then we read and found out, and he wasn't speaking to him, that there was a, a, an issue with getting those above ground sewage plants ordered and delivered. I, I don't know specifics, I don't know what was going on there. Uh, and he was trying to find out if, uh, additional information. Someone from the SBA told me that it may actually be just as cheap to go ahead and put someone in the